Hi everybody, it's Eggy Fitz again. Welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how I cut coforma. Now, coforma is the plastic stuff that you put on the bottom of your floor in the corners, and it's it forms, as the name says, the cove. It goes up the wall, so it's a forma of the cove, basically, or ultra like sort of capping coves. So this is how we do it. So here I've got a bathroom and as you can see there's nothing on the walls this is just the plaster. So the customer is going to come in after me and he's going to put white rock on the wall um, on top of the ultra what goes up the walls. Um, normally what they do is they put white rock on first and then they put a, a tea trim which is basically like that and then you you clip a like a little plastic thing at the top and that becomes sort of like your capping so the capping of the top of the curve that goes up the wall so that stops the water getting in but this customer wanted to put it all on after that's fine by me so i've um prepped this floor the best i can so i've applied it out and as you can see i've, I've ramped out over here you can see a bit higher over there see there's um feather finish and basically um just wrapped it off the ply because obviously this piece of plastic there's a plastic tray there and it when you've got the shower on you want the water to run down and into that drain there so we've wrapped it out As you can see it's totally ramped out and that's where the drain is so it's going to be basically a walk-in shower so you can walk right into this room put the shower on and all the water's just going to basically go down that hole and into the drain and uh, you know how don't have a shower tray with a door or anything like that um they probably put like a glass door on top of the floor in just to sort of keep the water this side um, of the tray so it goes in because if you add water over the rest of the room it'll probably just sit there as you can see i got a little light there because uh in that doorway because they didn't actually have any um, electric into this as it is so i had to improvise and get a little flood light Actual operated one. So that black stuff is the coforma and it comes in two meter lengths. As you can see, I'm having a cracking time. That's why I wear dungarees. In the winter, my butt is on show. Yes, yes. As you can see here, the coforma is sort of like curved. You can see that curve in it? But that's the bit that goes up the wall. Called coforma. As I explained in the video, it runs along the floor, goes up that curve, and then goes up the wall. A nice sweeping motion. What you don't want to do with um, Cap and Cove is crease it in the corners. I mean, I have seen other fitters where they run the outro up to the wall, crease it, and then run it up, but that's not the way to do it. You want a nice smooth curve, and that's what this thing does. It curves out. I mean, these things aren't that expensive. If you've got a crease there, it's liable to break because under the stresses, because um, Ultra has actually got like string in it to make it stronger. And if you sort of crease it up, you'll break that string. And it's just not, not the way to do it. So 
So first things first, what I'm doing is I'm laying them all out next to each other so I can use a contact adhesive spray. We used to use um, a product called F60. Um, you can still get it and some still use it, but uh, contact adhesive is so much quicker, easier to use, and um, you're not basically going to fall out because of the fumes that F60 gives off. Um, Obviously, contact spray gives off fumes, but not as bad as F60. What a plonk. All those bits I just knocked off are the inserts for the drain. In another video, I'll show you how I do the drains. In this one, we're just going to focus on this coke warmer. As you can see, it says instant spray contact adhesive. So contact adhesives, pretty simple. What it means is you spray it on one surface, you spray it on the other, let it dry, and as soon as it makes contact, hence the name, it grabs. So I've just laid out enough that I think will suffice for this room. And what you've got to do is you've got to make sure you give them a good, healthy coat of the spray. And the main bits you want to spray are either end of the curve. They're the bits that are going to touch the floor and the wall. The bit in the middle will not touch anything because it's off the ground. You've got to give it a good coat. Exactly what I just said. Those two do, the middle will not. So make sure you get those coated in glue. Once those are coated, you've got to put your attention to the wall and the floor. So you want to spray the floor where obviously this coform is going to touch and you want to do the wall. Now I'm going to go higher in the wall because I'm going to use this same adhesive later when I put the flooring up the wall. So I might as well spray it now and then I just got to spray the back of the flooring and then it will grab.
So as you can see, you can see that I'm spraying a section on the floor, which is probably about an inch and a half, about that wide on the floor. And obviously on the wall and higher for obviously when the flooring comes up. So that's an internal, basically the wall comes out and goes back in and there's an internal there. So I'll show you how to cut those in a sec. But yeah, you have to spray that one and spray the floor quite a bit because that will be put in, the flooring will be put in separately. You can't actually fold a carpet or a carpet, sorry, an outro in and out in one piece. It has have a separate piece and that's going to have a separate piece but that's for a future video back on with the uh, couple Just trying to save you from the sight of my crack. So as I said, I sprayed all around the edge, I've sprayed on the coformer, and what you have to do is you leave it to dry and then it you basically can put it on and it grabs. So I sprayed that, then I went out for a nice cup of tea and let it air it out because that stuff does give off a really stinky smell and it's quite it's not nice. You want it in a well ventilated area basically. I didn't even have a door on this, so it was quite ventilated, that's for sure. I let that all that gas sort of get rid of. Um, and yeah, I had a nice cup of tea, and the customer, I think, even gave me a Twix. So it was a good time. So now let's get this on the wall, shall we? This one here, the flat. So if you didn't hear that, what I'm saying is we put the coformer up to the wall. We don't mitre that piece. We put it flat to the wall. We make sure that the back and the bottom are nice and smooth on the floor for a nice transition. And we rub it in and it will grab straight away.
So we can see the other end is nice and straight as well. So that hasn't been mitered either. But let me show you how I do the mitre. That's how solid. Some people mitre, but that was back in the day when I used to mitre both edges. But the problem with the mitre, you've got nothing behind it. So when you weld in, the weld just falls down that weld. And so if you didn't hear that, what I said was basically back in the day, we used to mite up both pieces and put them together. The problem when they're both mitered is when you've got the weld that you're putting on, it can slip through that gap of the two wet, two miters, basically. The weld will slip through it. Now we run one piece straight up to the wall and we put a miter on top of that and it sits on top. So there's nowhere for the weld to escape, basically. You basically got a backbone of that first one, and then you put the miter on top of that. That miter, you don't want to do that. So this is the way to do it. So you get a piece, start off, and then you up a bit here. Now that's an external. So you offer it up. You can see it fits in there lovely. So this takes a bit of practice. What I do is I just go on to the co form, start from the top, go down a little bit, and then come towards you. Basically, the thickness of that co form. You start and go away and it takes a bit of practice sometimes you do it really big sometimes you do it short and it's a little stubby you can push it up against and see if the bottom lines up with the bottom of the other co-form and you can cut it again you know and the piece that cuts off of that will be an external miter what I like to do is cut this little backbony bit Bit, so it can sit flatter because that kind of gets in the way. It sits flat so yeah, it's got sort of like ridges on the back, um, on the on the co form, and I like to just at the end where it sits on top of the other one, cut them off so it sits nice and flat. Okay. I hope you're liking the two camera sort of situation we got here. I thought I would um, try and record it with both cameras because one of them's been messing around a little bit and I've been like sort of losing um, a lot of footage. So I thought I'd do it with two and we'll see what it is. And I got both really good footages, so I thought I'd put them side by side so you can see them from two different angles. I hope you like it. What I like to do is put the factory edge up against the wall and then cut the piece in the middle. I don't know why. I just think it's easier than trying to put it up against the bit in the middle and then try and force in the, the edge against the wall and pulling it back, forcing it in, trying to get it right. It's just quicker and easier.
And if you look in the corner here, so you see that white stuff over the in the that picture over there. Um, you see the white stuff in that corner. Now that's um, my favorite flexi fix, which I use to glue down um, a gripper and door bars and dozings and all sorts. Um, it's basically filling that void up against that plaster because if there's a gap there, my weld when I'm putting the flooring in will disappear. So I've filled it with that. I mean, you could mix up some feather finish or rapid and fill it up with that. But um, flex fix goes off in 20 minutes. So and it's solid. So I've done it there and I've done it in the um, internal miter as well. So we go down and across, and that creates the mitre. So we've got that. Make sure it fits. It does might need a little bit more of this curve. Yeah. So that's one. I'm going to cut the back on off. So it fits nice. this curve to nothing against here. Cut it off. So I don't know if you heard that, but basically you're gonna have an architrave around that door frame. So having a curve right up to the edge of the door frame is gonna get in the way of um, that architrave so what you want to do is reduce the curve down to nothing so you start with a nice curve and it runs into the wall and then it's nothing okay that's how you do it I'm gonna do... Okay. Let's start in the middle and run towards the edges So as you can see, what I did is I took a triangle out from the middle, probably about five inches away from the end. I reduced it from the middle to nothing on the end on both sides. So you take that little triangle out and then the two bit that you want to push together won't push. So you just give them relief cuts, top and bottom, and then they're squeezed together. You see how it goes together. As you can see, it's a nice curve until it hits that bit and then it gets reduced down to flat against the wall. So we're starting in the middle and we're running it out 
to the edge of the top and the bottom keys. What you don't want to do is when you're you're cutting these little relief slits so it moves uh, cut too deep and then you end up with an extra bit you know you don't want to cut it completely off you want it still attached it makes it easier to move it to go back together When the vinyl comes up, it'll be reduced back into there. It's not just as simple as getting a bit of cold form and chucking it on the wall. You know, it, you have to think about different things and the way you're going to sort of fit in the future. So obviously further in this video, um, well, I'll make a different video about it, but how I fit the outro, you know, and it's going to be reduced um, where I'm going to put the cuts in the corners. You know, that's why you've got to miter it certain ways and reduce it certain ways. Um, yeah, it's not just about just slapping a piece of black stuff on the wall. Um, you know, it's a bit of skill going to it. So as you can see, what I said earlier about um, I put some flexi fix on the internal and I obviously did the external as well. So I wanted um, a nice solid bit of wall to weld to. This is all in preparation for welding. And I've got this piece pulled off from the other. I've got this piece as well. So this is just an off cut from those miters that I were cutting. So obviously once you cut an internal miter, it what's left over gives you an external miter. I mark this with a pencil because I want this to be as accurate as I can. Because the this co-former is sort of like the backbone for where the weld goes. So it has to be good for the future weld that's gonna sit on top of it. Flat for the world to sit on. Okay. So, here it is. The world can go up there and put a flat on that. 
Do I point the blower from run that way or we have to run that way? You have to get a really sharp point on it. It won't sit on it, so you give it something to bed on. As I said, when you've got those two external miters together, you've got a real sharp edge right up. Now, if you're welding that, the welds are going to slip one way or slip the other. So you run your blade down it to make it nice and flat. So it's got welds got somewhere to sit. Otherwise, if you leave it at a point, it can slip left or right. It's not going to sit there. You just run your knife down to make it nice and smooth and you can feel it with your finger and you think, yeah, that's, that's, that's a good transition there for the weld. Yes. So I'm just going to try and use up some of the bits, either internal from kind of that external. So we're on to the last bit. Cut the backbone bits out. As you can see, the contact adhesive grabs pretty well. It doesn't have to be super, super strong because obviously once you've glued the ultra up the walls and on the floor, that's going to hold it in place. It's not going to move, but it's good. This contact adhesive is really good, so it grabs straight away anyway. You don't have to worry about it too much. So that's it. That's the way I do it. And um, yeah. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Um, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Any questions, just leave them down below, innit? See you soon. Well, that was a bit weird, so let's go back.